What are the differences between these two lenses, the 24-50 f2.8 G and the 24-70 f2.8 G Master Mark II? Because if you've been looking at this lens right here, you may see the price of this one and wonder if it's actually worth getting this over this. Now, obviously you are getting a 20 mil of focal length difference in terms of your reach. What does that physically look like? Well, here's a couple of examples for you to see the difference between 50 to 70 and what that can get you. That in itself might be enough for you to say, nope, I need the 24 to 70 or maybe even the 20 to 70. Just know that you are able to use things like crop mode and clear image zoom to get you into that 70 mil equivalent look. I would always recommend doing this in camera with a Sony camera. If you have the option of using the super 35 crop mode, do that. With the newer cameras, you're still getting a decent amount of megapixels. You can still crop in further in post if you want to, but try and do that in camera first if you can. Sharpness is something that you probably are gonna be concerned with when buying a lens. You want it to be as sharp as possible. You're probably thinking because this is so much more money, it's gonna be substantially more sharp, but that is not the case. Now I did not have the lens profile corrections at the time of making this video as I had this lens pre-launch. So take everything that I'm saying with a grain of salt. Just know in short, this lens really holds its own versus the 24 to 70 GM Mark II in terms of sharpness. So in Lightroom here, if we take a look right in the middle, tell me if you can tell the difference between these two images. And tell a point out, it is very, very hard to see which is which. The only noticeable difference that I can see, which you will probably realize once I say, it, is the contrast in the lines. The 24 to 70 GM Mark II is a little bit more contrasty. The blacks are a little bit more black, but not every time. That is obviously going to depend on the lighting and the situations that you're in and that you're shooting in. Now, when you look in the corners, it's a little bit more obvious, but still not huge. We're really splitting hairs here. It's a little bit more contrasty with the 24 to 70 GM Mark II. And in certain situations, I found the 24 to 50 to be a tad softer, but not huge. You will not be disappointed with this in terms of sharpness, in terms of general overall image quality. If you've already made a decision by now, great. Thank you for watching. If you aren't subscribed, can I ask you to maybe click down there and just hit that button? There's no contract. You can unsubscribe at any time. I know a lot of you that watch these videos don't subscribe. Maybe you've forgotten. Maybe you just don't like me enough to come back regularly, but it does help. I appreciate it. Let's get back to the video. Unless you've been sitting under a rock, you'll know that autofocus with Sony cameras with any of the new lenses that come out now is perfect. There is nothing wrong with it. It functions exactly as you'd expect it to every single time. We're almost at the point now where I don't even want to test it for video. I just know it's going to work okay. But I still did, just so you have a couple of examples to physically see. Having the camera set to the fastest, most responsive settings, there's no difference. You can't you can't see enough of a difference to say the autofocus performance is better on one lens than the other for video. Focus breathing is definitely worse on the 24 to 50 f 2.8 if you have focus breathing compensation turned off. With it turned off, both these lenses, there's a noticeable difference. The 24 to 70 GM Mark II handles it much better. This is obviously a way that Sony was able to make this as small as they possibly could, pack all the tech into this that they could. They're using software to fix hardware issues, which is genius, really, if you think about it, especially as all the newer cameras now do have that focus breathing compensation available in them and you can turn it on and it all but eliminates it completely. Yes, there is that little crop on there when you have the focus breathing compensation on there, but it is a night and day difference in terms of performance. Now, if you look at these lenses side by side at 24, you'll realize that the 24 to 50 is actually a little bit wider. Now, this is likely because I did not have the lens profile corrections at the time of making this video because this was pre-release, but I've also seen that before when you compare like a 20 Tamron to a 20 Sony, it does happen. The 24 to 50 also has a lot more obvious distortion and vignetting in the image. Again, you could probably fix this with the lens profile corrections. But if you compare with both profiles turned off, the 24 to 70, generally speaking, is optically a better image. There's less distortion, there's less vignetting. Sony puts the best of the best in their GM lenses. It's not to say that their G lenses aren't good, it's just these are their better lenses. Let's pause for a second to talk about memory cards. PGY Tech have just come out with a new version of their memory card card reader slash case. It comes in both green and black now. And as everyone requested, it comes in CF type A and CF type B now, as well as the original SD. The past couple of years, I'm a massive fan of green everything. So I'm really happy they introduced that as an option. We open it up on the inside. You now have space for one, two, three CF Express type A's. Or if you opt for the type B, version you have space for two in there now both versions have space for one two three sd cards and it does come with a high speed adapter for micro sd also a space for four micro sd cards two nano sims and it comes with a sim key two card slots there for reading sd and if you get the cf express type a like this one is or if you opt for the b version you have the space for the b and the sd card so you now have this little orange button there which you can't miss 
push that and it pops out the cable so you don't have to use your finger to get it out like before and then your cable is just built in around plug that into your computer to transfer everything super fast transfer speed with these as well 10 gigabits per second and if you wanted to take off this exterior silicon like you could before on the original one you can do so this is ip54 so dirt splash and drop resistant if you're interested in anything i just talked about i'll pop a link down below let's get back to the video now, in terms of the actual performance of both these lenses, how the images are going to look, how it's going to perform on your camera, that is the biggest differences between these two. Now, on the actual lenses themselves, there are some more physical differences, which we're now going to talk about. Now, the big obvious one is the size between the two, both overall in every possible dimension. The 24 to 70 is a lot bigger and it's a lot heavier. We are going to ignore the fact that this goes to 70 at this point, but we're going to zoom both lenses out. That is what they both look like. Now, it won't fit in my close up angle but we can show you both lenses when the barrels are fully extended. That is the difference between the two. So this is at 70. This with the barrel out is actually at 24, which we'll talk about in a second too. So know that in every way, the 24 to 70 is obviously bigger and it's a lot heavier, takes up more space in your bag. If you ever start traveling more and more, bag real estate is a premium. You wanna have the least amount of stuff with the lightest bag you possibly can. And that is, I think, a big reason why a lot of people may end up going for this over this and the cost. Now, in the past few years, Sony has made their G lenses and their GM lenses, their G Masters, very similar in terms of design. There used to be a more noticeable difference between the two, but now it's very uniform between them. The biggest obvious difference you can see on the GM lenses is that you have that orange reflective badge there on the g master it is a black reflective badge if that's something you care about then that's obviously a big deal if you really want to get in close as well you will notice that the black on the g master so this one right here is a little bit darker and a little bit more textured let me see if i can get in close here so you can see there's a little less texture on there compared to the G Master. Does that affect the image performance? No. Manual focus rings are both on the top and zoom rings are both on the bottom. Both have aperture rings. Now you'll see if you put these side by side, your manual focus rings on your GM is a lot bigger than on your G. This is about 30% smaller than it is on this, but finish is identical. And it's really nice now that Sony does have the declickable apertures. It's really hard to do this backwards <laughs> on uh, all their lenses that come out. That used to be something you just get on the GM lenses. Why is that important? Well, if you shoot video, you want a declicked aperture so you can smoothly change and it's less obvious if you need to make compensations for exposure going from like inside to outside. You don't want to change your ISO because those are a lot more obvious. If you have a declicked aperture, it's very smooth to go between those exposure changes. Both of these lenses are focused by wire as are most lenses that come out these days. But Sony has a really nice linear system in these. So it's very easy to replicate manual focus focus pulls if you needed to. You can do them over and over again. It used to be with focus by wire lenses and the big argument that people didn't like them is they'd have something called focus acceleration where if you turn this at a slightly different speed every time it would change how quickly it focuses. That's not the case anymore. It's very responsive, very linear and much easier to replicate those manual focus pulls. Here's an interesting one that makes the 24 more appealing than the 24 to 70. This appears to be almost perfectly par focal. When I say perfectly par focal, it makes me think of Mr. Poppins' Penguins. It's a movie my kids have been loving recently. Anyway, the 24 to 70 isn't par focal, at least my copy isn't. We're using the Ninja 5, this is the 24 to 50. We're at 50, we're in manual focus as you can see there. I'm gonna zoom into the middle of this gray card and we are going to manually focus it so now it's focused and now we're going to zoom out to 24 and you'll see it's still in focus back into 50 we're at f2.8 as well for reference focused still focused so now with the 24 to 70 gm mark ii manual focus as you can see there zoom into the middle same thing manually focus it and now we're going to zoom out zoom back into the middle and you can see it's not in focus. So that's something that the 24 to 50 has that the 24 to 70 doesn't have. If you're not sure what par focal is and you didn't pick up from that, it means that if you manually focus at 24, zoom into 50, it's still gonna be in focus. Go back to 24, anything between, it's always gonna be in focus. It's really useful for video mostly. Now on the 24 to 70, you get an extra switch called smooth and tight. And that essentially allows you to zoom in the barrel either I mean, smooth and tight, I would say it's loose and tight basically, but you can't really put loose on a lens. I've said that before. Smooth is a lot looser to turn than tight. Tight gives you a lot more resistance. You don't get that on the 20 to 50. And if I had to give you uh, how this feels versus the smooth and tight on this, it's 
right in the middle. Both lenses have the autofocus, manual focus switch. And on the GM Mark II, you actually get one, two custom buttons. And on the 24 to 50, you just get the one. There's no other buttons on there whatsoever. Now on the 24 to 70, you also get a, where is it? Iris lock right here. Essentially what that does is if you wanna leave it in A, you can lock the iris and then you cannot take it out of A now, it's locked into there. You don't get that on the 24 to 50, you still get the A. A essentially means that you control it in camera opposed to controlling it on the physical lens itself. So you can lock it on the 24 to 70, but you can't lock it on the 24 to 50. If you have one of Sony's smaller bodies, like the A7C, the A7C2, the A7CR, the 24 to 70 is, is very, very big on it. It is, it's not a small lens by any means. And it does feel when you're using it very, very front heavy. It doesn't feel nicely balanced. And that's at 24. If you go into 70, it just, it's not horrible to use, but it just doesn't feel like they were designed for each other. Whereas the 24 to 50 is so much smaller and it's lighter, it pairs much nicer with these smaller bodies. So you can see there, that is what it looks like on the A7C Mark II. That's at 24. Overall, it feels much nicer on there. It feels a lot more balanced. It doesn't feel front heavy. It feels like these two were designed for each other, whereas this wasn't really designed for this. This is designed for bigger bodies, I would say. Now, if you're using one of the bigger bodies like the A7R5, then the 2470 obviously makes a little bit more sense and it does balance nicer on there. But it's not to say that this feels too small for that lens. It's still fits and works very nicely on there as well. So the biggest physical difference between these two lenses, which is gonna be a downside for a lot of people, and I'm sure it's a lot to do with the design of this lens, how they're able to make it so small, is when the 24 to 70 is at 24, the barrel is compressed into the lens. When the 24 to 50 is at 24, the barrel is extended, and it's almost the same height as the 24 to 70 at 24. So know that, if you're looking at either of these lenses, that might bother you. If you're using it on a gimbal, is it gonna affect it hugely? No, and even if you have a more modern gimbal, it's not gonna affect the balance anyway because the motors will make up for that. But no, at 24, it's extended, and then when you're compressed into the lens, it's at 50. 24 to 50 G F28 has a 67 mil filter thread on the front, and this doesn't, oh, it's really dusty, look at that. This one doesn't have it printed on it, but it is an 82 mil, and there is a big difference when you look at them side by side there. This is one I noticed by looking really closely at the lenses, and I don't know if I'll be able to demonstrate it here, but you can see this is the 20 to 50, and this is the 24 to 70. You see the little rubber gasket? It's a tiny bit wider on the 24 to 70. That is all the actual differences that I could come up with when looking at these lenses in close, physically, practically, which one should you buy? That is a decision you have to make, but hopefully this video has helped you make that decision. If you wanna purchase either of these, there are links down below which you can click on. They help support the channel, they are affiliate links. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.